Hello and welcome to PostgreSFM, a weekly show about all things PostgreSQL. I'm Michael, founder of PG Mustard, and this is my co-host Nikolai, founder of Postgres AI. Hey Nikolai, what are we talking about today? Hi Michael, uh, last time we discussed uh, versioning of database schema or database migration management. I already forgot the proper name of it. Uh, we can continue this uh, field and uh, discuss uh, database branching today and how it is difficult for how how it is different from from uh, just like i don't know like snapshotting for example or from um, schema schema version control like well, because it's it's like adjacent area and, and uh, which is not yet yet developed. We don't have good tools yet, by the way. So so we probably will discuss some ideas and concepts uh, and what to expect from future uh, from the future in terms of various tooling and what other companies do and also what uh, my company does because we we looks like we go in this direction. We develop a database branching right now. So. Yeah, exactly. Depending on exactly how you define it, it seems like there's quite a few database companies at the moment talking about branching, but each one means something slightly different. Or as you dig into it, I've seen I've seen your conversations on Twitter with a few people trying to understand what they mean by it and trying to get some definitions down. Um, so I'm looking forward to hearing your thoughts around that. Is it is it worth us? Oh yeah, so database lab engines worth discussing maybe in terms of what it does. Um, what you what you're calling branching and what some of their their some others are, is that worth right. doing first? Yeah, well, I think uh, discussion of uh, database lab engine as a whole it's uh, maybe a separate discussion because uh, there are many things that it can do and many uh, different use cases uh, where it is useful. But briefly, I, I think it's a good idea. And yeah, let let me do some overview of uh, database. Uh, branching uh, topic. Uh, so, uh, database lab engine, which we Postgres AI develop, it's uh, initially it's uh, uh, it was born uh, when we needed to experiment very quickly uh, to uh, to check uh, first of all actually SQL optimization ideas, uh, uh, not on production but in some uh, non-production environment, which behaves where Postgres behaves uh, identically to production. And we needed to isolate uh, experiments uh, of uh, different people, and we also needed to iterate, uh, so to reset quickly and to throw out bad ideas, uh, switch to new ideas uh, quickly. But when you uh, build indexes during hours or you already changed uh, your schema heavily changing data, sometimes you need like to spend many hours uh, converting some uh, column, and then you realize it's a dead end, you need to start from scratch, it's quite difficult usually to uh, have another environment provisioned quickly. Uh, but, um, so what we solved this uh, originally for optimization using uh, thing cloning, thing provisioning uh, f uh, based on uh, ZFS, either ZFS or LVM, although other options also possible to implement. And Without any big details, like you can run a single server with dozens of uh, independent, uh, logically independent Postgres instances where uh, where database is the same everywhere, but it's writable, so you, so you can deviate, you can create your own index, and and the planner behaves as, exactly as on production. This is the yeah. trick. And the uh, creation of new clone takes only a few seconds regardless of database size. Sounds like magic, but this magic is going to kill another magic. Uh, I call it, like many people call it, black magic. Uh, Postgres DBA knowledge is, and skills is like area of black magic. You need like to spend 15 years and then you quickly say, this will work, this won't work. And people say, oh, you're like black magic guy. Yes, black magic means like something is hidden. Our magic is, is white magic. Uh, no, nothing is hidden and any developer, any engineer can see behavior, not disturbing others and experiment and fail and so on. So this is what we did. Many clones uh, are running on single machine. So you pay for one machine and have dozens of clones. Uh, and uh, we switched then to area of testing in CI/CD pipelines 
So like it's a whole new world as, as, as well. Like again, whole big topic: how to uh, what what can be tested in CI/CD pipelines in terms of database, in terms of Postgres. Um, our idea is obviously we have database finally, not tiny, small like one gigabyte of something just generated or I don't know brought to you by uh, Docker pool, but we have whole database like we can can be hundred gigabytes or terabytes. It's, it's does, it doesn't matter for us. We can just set it up and and make uh, pipelines working provisioned very quickly in, in few seconds. So testing is another area. Some people do various things. For example, some people just uh, test PG upgrade inside our container. It's also possible and so on. Uh, but the uh, key here is that we already do it for a couple of years, or maybe three years. We always said this is like thin cloning. We use the term cloning. Clone, clone, clone. It's very natural for cloud engineers, for DBS, for like SREs, because uh, there are um, cloning. There is cloning uh, term used in clouds, right? You can clone yeah. your EBS volume also from snapshots. So copyright there as well. It's also like thin provisioned, but thin provisioning, but it's kind of different because you pay for each volume separately. But still, uh, cloning is used there. Or RDS clones, Aurora has also thin clones. And so you can single storage, but multiple instances running using, the, all of them use this uh, same storage and you can have m multiple uh, uh, writable uh, instances. So you can do writes independently, similar, but again, you, you need to pay for each compute node separately. And that's why no, no, ni neither RDS clones nor Aurora clones are good for uh, testing in CI/CD pipelines because you you want constant uh, price, constant cost. When you need to pay, also by the way, you need to wait many minutes to provision them both. And so yeah, that. But we use cloning. That's... This is the key. Uh, what I wanted to say until some point. Uh, sorry, I, I interrupted you. No, no, no. I was going to say the, I guess, uh, thin cloning is, is specifically named as opposed to thick cloning as it, you could take a full right. copy of it. And, and that's what a lot of systems have offered for a long time. Uh, and this, this is a, obviously a step above that in terms of perform, in terms of speed, but also in terms of not having to have that extra. Um, thick cloning, yeah. actually, we can uh, devote a whole episode to it. And maybe yeah. we, we should, because it's also an interesting, an interesting question, how to clone a large database. We're using regular tools. For example, do, do you just clone PG data directory? or use PG base backup at physical level, right? How to do it live without interruptions. Of course, any Postgres, experienced Postgres DBA knows the answer, uh, PG start backup, stop backup, or just use PG base backup. By default, it will be okay and you can do it live. Or you can use it at logical level uh, using PG dump restore. It has questions how to speed it up and so on. But roughly we can assume, assume that regular, both of them, by, by the way, we consider thick cloning, but we distinguish physical and logical levels. So yeah. dump restore is also cloning, but at logical level, and, but you can choose uh, which objects to clone there, right? And you can uh, speed it up uh, using dash J, uh, but in this case you need additional space because you cannot uh, use dash J and do it on the fly. Uh, the problem uh, which is solved by another tool, Dmitry Fontaine is developing uh, PG copy DB. I, maybe I'm wrong with the name of the tool, but it's quite new and it, it exactly provides your ability at logical level to use uh, multiple threads and uh, avoid uh, intermediate file, uh, backup file, nice. so you can do it on the fly. It's, it's, that's interesting. But it also raises question how long uh, our, our transactions are on the source. Many, many, many things uh, uh, in the area of thick cloning. Why I'm, I'm, I know it uh, very well, because to provision database lab engine, we need first to get data in a regular way, either logical or physical. Uh, yeah. so, right. Thick clone. Like one thick clone that you can base the thin clones off. But that's where I think this and comes. We to main, that... And then we need to also to maintain it either continuously yeah. or to do the uh, full refresh uh, on schedule. Everything like is possible. nightly or something. Yeah. So, but that's where this becomes really useful, I think, for the branching discussion, because suddenly if we can do thin clones or something like them, 
we get the concept of maybe you can have branches that aren't just empty, that aren't just uh, just the schema. They can have real data behind them as well. So what happened with branching, the branching term? Yeah. First of all, I, I didn't realize it in the past, but now I see it very well. Uh, cloning is very uh, infrastructure language. Uh, yeah. It's not uh, friendly to to developers because uh, in Git, Git, there is Git clone, but it's kind of different. You clone whole yeah. repository. There you have revisions, or commit number, uh, commit numbers, and branches. Uh, and clones, it's a language of uh, SRE people or DBAs, DBREs, uh, infrastructure people, uh, or. Of course, all, any engineer knows like clone in various aspects, but still uh, they prefer branching. And suddenly, uh, some time ago, uh, Planet Scale, which originally uh, provides uh, sharding for MySQL, Vitesse, uh, they are de develop they developed Vitesse, uh, and founders uh, are the same who created Vitesse. They uh, it it looked like my pers from my perspective suddenly in, to the sh to sharding problem they added schema management uh, capabilities and they called it okay we have now database branching and we have zero downtime deployments uh, for your schema changes hustle free so like great and on the front page it was like it was like maybe in last year in 2021 and on front page i saw database branching but when i clicked inside documentation i was curious because it's our area i felt like oh, okay okay do they play with uh, thin clones or what theme provisioning uh, but inside you can see database schema branching already so d slightly different term right and you realize that they clone only schema then you can change it they, then they produce diff uh, we some of topics of our previous episode and uh, this diff uh, you can see it you can approve it other people can approve it so there is some flow uh, and then it's deployed in zero downtime fashion. Yeah, nice. and nothing about data. So that that raises the question about test, like how do you test on the performance side of things? Uh, right. Is this all, uh, and how do multiple people work together? That kind of thing. Right. Well, first of all, this is uh, uh, also viable approach. I, I should admit. Because uh, this is hard problem, zero downtime migrations. By the way, last time we didn't mention my article, uh, I don't know, like 18 mistakes of uh, making uh, schema changes in Postgres. Uh, worth mentioning this article. I selected, there are many types of mistakes you can do, but I selected some and discussed in detail. Uh, it's on, on our website, Postgres AI. So uh, it's a good problem to solve very actually hard because most of diff tools we see and I maybe I'm wrong but Liquibase has diff tool we mentioned and uh, some, some, somebody in comments thank you so much uh, on YouTube uh, raised this uh, Liquibase also has the diff and PG admin has diff there are uh, separate projects like Migra but all of them show uh, simple diff like create index without word concurrently not uh, discussing the problem how to change data type in, in one billion row table. So they uh, solve hard problem, but there is hardest hardest problem, how to generate diff in zero downtime fashion. As far as I understand, a planet base, uh, they show diff regular in regular form, but when they apply changes, they uh, perform something like similar to PG repack approach, when you uh, create f full copy of table, uh, recording all changes in some delta table, like ch change log, right? And then in single transaction or in multiple transactions, it's interesting also topic, but sm uh, in steps, uh, you apply all changes and then you already switch to new table. And of course, this approach requires some disk space and it's kind of uh, too heavy for small changes sometimes. Like it, it depends, but it's interesting that they have full automation of it. But again, they don't care about data in this case. But their CEO in, in Twitter discussion said they are working on data branching. Nice. I'm very curious how they will solve the terminology problem. You know, two biggest problems in computer science, right? Naming and cache, cache invalidation, right? So and off by one errors. 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so obviously they have naming issue because they already use database branching for schema only branching. Uh, then this year earlier, I saw that Superbase have uh, uh, database branching in their roadmap, and also Neon appeared. And Neon said we are uh, open source Aurora, right? Yeah. Aurora has thin cloning, which is, in my opinion, not good for testing. It's too expensive and it's too slow. It, they, it's like thin cloning, yes, but you need to wait minutes and you need to pay for compute for each clone separately. So it's if you use big O notation in terms of money, it's a big O from number of clones uh, for compute power. Fortunately, not for storage, but also, of course, the Aurora also charges you for I.O. and uh, yeah. for testing also not very pleasant. But I guess uh, big enterprises are okay with this. And it's, well, it's better than nothing as well, right? It's better than not having it. Of course, you can, yeah, you can test uh, some heavy changes in this way, but it, this is not something you will uh, use for each uh, pull request or merge request or, or backend code changes. It's too, too, too much, right? But I also, by the way, I found that observed like this area. Uh, Heavy clones where we can use all all um, uh, all CPUs and so on. They are needed only infrequently for infra infrastructure teams. For example, upgrades, yeah. migra big migrations to some new hardware or operational system. But uh, developers these days they do changes many times per day. Sometimes, right? So like it's very often. And there we need the very very cheap and fast cloning. But Okay, back to database branching. So uh, Neon in the very beginning said we are going also to to be very good database for CI/CD pipelines, and we uh, have database branching. Not uh, discussing what it means actually, like in detail. How how it is how is it different from cloning, for example, or snapshotting, or or like these infrastructure languages uh, uh, terms, and uh, then. Someone else also said, like, oh, some other projects also said, like, we have Git-like approach uh, for databases for Postgres, and then, like, it's, I spent some time trying to realize uh, how branching could could behave for for database and for Postgres to solve problems of development and testing, and finally, I realized that branching branches are very different from, from our clones because. Clones, uh, they they take some memory, they consume memory. For example, I I want in Git I can uh, have thousands of branches, and nobody like I don't pay for it extra. Okay, some some small uh, storage uh, penalty, but that's it, right? But if if, if all branches are identical, uh, I don't pay at all. Uh, no, nothing, nothing, right? But uh, when you run uh, Think clone in database lab engine, it consumes some memory because it has uh, shared buffers allocated. So it's like it has something like Postgres running. So it, it has some cost. We have some limit, of course, uh, defined by uh, size of your memory on, on the server and uh, and shared buffers, for example. All right. So we can adjust and run more clones, but still we have some limit. For branches, we don't want to have limit, right? This is one thing. Of course, uh, name is also a thing, uh, but also a thing like in Git, it's very good. We discussed it. Like it, 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 it's decentralized, and one of properties of Git it allows you several stages of review. You can review yourself before you push your commits. Uh, you can ask your colleagues to review if you have a pull request, merge request in GitHub, GitLab, so, so to, to see difference between branches bef before you merge your development branch to your main branch. But if we say our clones are branches, we cannot do it because we, can, we want to do this. We want to say this is our state and then say multiple colleagues or multiple CI pipelines test it, check it and continue working with it, for example. So we obviously we realized we need it. It was in our roadmap for a while, but we realized branching looks like snapshotting on demand in, for your clones. So you have the clone, you change something, you put snapshot via API CLI or UI. We have all of them, 
And then you say, okay, this is this is snapshot, this is commit, or this is it. Continue working with it, right? So snapshot started to look like branching, right? And like kind of a name snapshot. And then I, you know what I did? I just opened uh, Git uh, documentation and re started to read it from scratch. And they say they have, by the way, slightly conflicting definitions of branching. Uh, there is no good definition like in the beginning. You need to go deeper. But I found a good definition. A branch is a pointer to commit, a named pointer to commit. Well, there are issues with this term, but it kind of also works for us. We say, okay, we have a named pointer to commit. It can shift. If new commit is created, it shifts automatically in this, in this kind of branch. And that's it. And we already developed prototype, uh, I think... It will be database lab engine 4.0 when it it will be released. We are not uh, in hurry, so we want everything work very smoothly and uh, tested by many teams properly. But it's already we have prototype. It's working uh, at CLI level so far, not UI. So you can maybe if you listen uh, like one month earlier, uh, later we already have uh, we should have UI as well and so on. But uh, it, you say like I want branch, so you. You like, you started to deviate. You run clone in, for this branch. Others can run their clones too. It's c clone like it appeared to me. Clone is like your working directory. You just grabbed the content of your code base and op open some ID or editors and started to change it. So clones is a, like it's a mean means to change the state. Well, it's like a running application, isn't it? Like the source code isn't like a running application. Right, um, but usually uh, running application doesn't mean like a changing of schema. But I, I usually avoid it. Uh, changing of schema should be during deployment, not during normal. Or some people do it, actually. Some evolution of schema initiated by your users. Uh, also, uh, temporary tables is a part of it. But I consider it as like very... Um, questionable practice leading to issues with management from database uh, DBA point of view. So I would say yeah. normal run, run of running application should not change your schema. You, you should try to avoid it. No, but uh, developer, developer opens editor, changes it, and then commits, git, push, git commit, git push, right? What I meant more is I really like the snapshot um, analogy. And I think like the code, the code at a specific commit is kind of like a snapshot of the application, but it's not the application running. And the, and yeah. in the same way, a clone is a running database, right? That you that you can create from a snapshot, maybe, or from I don't know quite how you're defining these things. But yeah, we don't need them running all the time. Just like a developer doesn't need an application, like they're a version of the application yeah. running all the time. Um, just just while we're debugging something, just while we're actually trying to to test it. So yeah, makes a load of sense in in theory. Yeah, I wanted to uh, to emphasize also that we consider these snapshots uh, as a whole uh, with data. It can can be production data if you can afford it. Uh, there are no if there are no issues with PII, GDPR, and others. But uh, we focus on schema changes. So data uh, like we can we also snapshot it and we provide it to clones or branches snapshots and so on but what is most meaningful is schema changes right because these uh, should be deployed sometimes uh, of course data also should be deployed but we want like git like approach uh, with data but applied to schema only we don't want to com compare uh, rows to, to have a data comparison and then deploy this. Maybe we will want it as, as well because we have it here, right? We, we, can, we can do something here as well. But so far, uh, I'm, like, I'm looking at the problems we have. We just want to, to mirror uh, the capabilities of Git and bring uh, uh, branches, database branches, to build uh, uh, very like effortless, uh, effortlessly build um, uh, non-production environments uh, matching your code. So you have br development branch code and you have development, br uh, development branch and database. So you can quickly take this code somewhere on your laptop or on your some uh, t 
like I don't know non production machine uh, in cloud and then you can request uh, uh, a clone for this branch latest snapshot in this branch will be used and we have postgres running and you can they go together and you can start testing developing your application and see how it works with uh, a lot of data similar to production this is what we do but if you do some changes data changes we th think they are not such so relevant because some tester can do many weird things with data there <laughs> and then we just need to th uh, to throw it away uh, so when we commit we commit fully but uh, we look mostly on uh, schema uh, and so far we relied that we use uh, one of these tools we criticized last last week uh, so Sketch, Liquibase, Flyway, uh, Rails migra migrations. We we see that people already use them, so we are not going to. So there is something to help there. We discussed problems they have. Uh, new generation, I, I'm sure, will be born in the nearest future. I think. But uh, what's really not solved is how to test it properly with a lot of data. The, here we have this branching. So. I just described some, maybe not very well I described it, because still it's kind of um, not very precise, this concept. It's already clear, but not s super clear. But uh, what I'm trying to do here is try to uh, define what database branching is. And this is how we see it. We're already developing uh, in this direction. Um, I, I'm curious what other companies think, actually. So, But uh, I think it would be good to to synchronize thoughts uh, and uh, to move in similar directions uh, because in this case everyone wins and developers have uh, have similar concepts in various product products right actually in uh, source control management systems uh, snapshots clones and so on like branches they also have different meaning meanings if you compare d detail they have ch uh, they have uh, differences so pro probably here it will happen as well database branching is uh, can be uh, can have different meanings in different tools ob obvious obviously right so yeah. i'm talking too much uh, no this is great and i think you're working on a document right are you going to share that on twitter RFC. when you're ready yeah. or yeah yeah i have some draft uh, for rfc uh, in this area uh, discussing like goals and anti anti goals because for example we don't want to uh, we don't want to be uh, very uh, we want for example to, to deal with data the div data and so on we focused on schema changes mostly because data yeah. production has probably different data for example we don't want to release data patches uh, and also there is there is a problem, interesting problem. You created uh, a column. I'm, I'm very sorry. I feel very sorry all the time because I, I'm, we have delay probably and uh, you're trying to interrupt me, but I'm already uh, switched. Uh, you wanted to ask something. Sorry. I was just going to add on the data front. I think I added it last week, but some t we found when I was doing this before, we found sometimes data is schema, like the lookup tables. So you might need to worry Dictionary. about that. But like yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So um, some you might have to worry about that at some point, but it wasn't like we. I think we added it in version two or something. So it it def definitely can get away with not having it in there or, or yeah. at first, but it does feel like it's it is there. It is important. Right. So right. I, I spent some time trying to also to think about um, how to merge. Merge is it's basically it's deploy. If you consider main is what should be done, should be present on our production environments. So merge is uh, some uh, you need to have div and then you need to go with this div to production roll it out. But but, well, but diff, uh -huh. diff is slightly different, isn't it? like diff is like compare these two things. But then I need a script like a in order to actually make one of them the same as the other, and that's not the same as a diff. But yeah, I agree. So first step is diff, and then second step is a, a well script diff can be it. seen as a series of uh, DDL comments. In this case, it's it's same. But the problem is that uh, you see it uh, uh, these DD uh, well uh, diff tools for Postgres schema they show alter comments. Most Linux comments. Yeah, most of them. I, I, but I consider that a second feature, right? The first feature is compare these two schemas, and they they will like highlight differences. 
Well, and maybe, yeah, yeah. So we have two yeah. approaches for diff. I agree, yeah. but uh, the problem with deployment will be if you go, if you create index common to to production, you will block people, and yeah. so you need to to you need to have advanced diff. And we spent some time prototyping this as well, and then I realized it's already kind of solved. Uh, like it's not solved well, but uh, we have a zoo of various tools for uh, deployment management, like Skeech. Ruby on Rails, database migration, and, so on. and they all ignore the fact that uh, data uh, should be changed in batches. Again, I'm advertising uh, GitLab uh, uh, mig mig migration hel helpers, so uh, which solves this very well for Ruby. And and like it's hard for us to like we, either we need to choose something or we need to somehow abstract abstraction like this. And then I realized, okay, people already solve this somehow. Let's just avoid this problem and we i consider this uh, currently i consider this as anti-goal and we just uh, take care of uh, uh, conflicts so if someone already changed schema in this branch you trying to change so we in other words we have something like cvs of or subversion very centralized so before you before you put your changes you need to update uh, and then you can you can already uh, push the changes, already resolving conflicts and maybe replaying your changes on top of other person changes. So we just take care of conflicts in quite simple way, uh, and uh, we don't solve the problem of merge fully, maybe postponing it. But we, what we have um, among goals, for example, imagine you created a column which is empty. Everything is filled, you have full database, but one column, it's new and it's empty. And how to test it? You need something there to test it. So it looks like we need to think about ability to provide some, I don't know, like what I don't like, like uh, fixtures and like seed um, databases where we have some fake data. But here we need it. We need to yeah. feel like we need to fill new columns, new tables. And developers should decide how to do it, should provide some mean for testing. So we have everything, but somehow we need to fill new column. Yeah, and like then maybe generation. snapshot, right? Maybe snapshot it, it consider this, like this is our test data. We have deviation from the, from our production, from main branch, but we already have test data. Let's go, like it's good. Uh, any other engineers can work with it and test it and play and, and explore how this feature behaves with many rows, right? Yeah, feels like a whole another topic. Yeah, well, testing is a whole another topic, yeah. definitely. There are major areas uh, we can discuss there as well. So sure. what excites me here is I, any, any direction I go, I feel how come this is still not developed? How can we live if without it? Like we, I see how we can live. We test on production. Every time I see, yeah. I have some question like this. It's about uh, like this, not a very beautiful term, but it's it's called uh, shift left testing. When we want developers test first, then some uh, like testing should be done in the very beginning. It should be shifted to very left in this uh, infinite DevOps. Uh, uh, DevOps sign, you know, like this infinity. Yeah, sign. I, I know what you mean. But like, even right. if it's not done in production, it's often done in like a stage, like a, a thick right. cone of production. But staging or... often is very different from production, so we end up testing it on production. Okay, really testing, really testing. Yeah, yeah. We we pretend sometimes we mark check boxes. It was tested in lower environments and staging everywhere. But uh, if you think about uh, was this testing real, it was. It was fake testing. I see what you mean. Yeah. Well, and happy this is to end on. we want to fix in our development processes. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. Any last thoughts or things you wanted to share with people? Well, uh, just uh, keep an eye on on what we are doing. Stay tuned, uh, and uh, any feedback, any ideas are welcome. I'm always ready to discuss this topic with everyone. I'm like, it's very, very, I think it's one of the hottest topics in the area of databases right now. I mean, many problems are being solved, Kubernetes and so on, but this problem needs to be solved as well. And like, 
majority of uh, development teams will benefit immediately from from better new generation tooling uh, to to build new uh, non production environments so i think we spend too much uh, time thinking on production but uh, to solve problems on, pro on production we need to start from non -pro non production and this is uh, this is interesting so ready to talk uh, with everyone just reach me out on twitter email anywhere and our regular mantra Thank you for for feedback, everyone, for subscriptions, likes, uh, topic ideas. I think we will again next time we we should uh, choose one of the topics proposed by by our audience. Very yep, appreciate sure. ideas, and that's it. Please ah share in your social networks, working groups, Slack, Discord, Mastodon, right? Everywhere. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> um, Absolutely. Well, thank you, Nikolai. Thanks, everybody. Take care. Thank you, Michael. Bye-bye.